Hey, hey, hey there, my Power Book 3 fans. It's your girl, Barbie J here, and we are talking about Raising Canaan Season 2, Episode 7, No Love Lost. And I really feel like that has to do with uh, uh, Hun Symphony. But I like this episode. This episode was pretty darn good. I guess out of five stars, I give it 4.75. I really liked it, but Rock is getting to be a bit much as well as that damn Cartier, honey. So let's get started right now with this recap review. So it starts with Laverne. She's at Nicole's grave and Nicole's father shows up in a cab and he startles her. Then he tells Laverne, don't worry that his wife is not there with him because they know his wife is a piece of work, honey. Then he shares with her that they're getting a divorce. I was like, damn, who tells a child that they're getting a divorce? Anyway, and he said he was glad that um, Laverne was in Nicole's life because she made her happy. And Laverne is just staring at him. And he ended with, Nicole cared about you, so I care about you. And if there is ever anything she needs, she knows where to find him. Then he asked about that cassette tape that they had. He said he turned the room upside down and couldn't find it. And the one with her and Nicole singing together. And she said she didn't know, you know. And he just assumed that his wife threw it away because he knows how she is. But damn, this part that came up next, this is what I didn't want to happen. We have Lou screwing Ziza. I told y'all she was going to hold that ish with him killing Crown over his head for sex. And she getting a bit little bossy with the sex too. And, and when these two Rasta dudes come in looking for Crown, saying that he borrowed 50000 from Linton Manley and he put the studio up for collateral, Lou is like, what? And so, and they said, and they don't see him soon. It will soon become the Linton Manley studio. I'm like, whoa, whoa. And then Ziza, she get upset because Lou not, not finished. He didn't finish. He ain't in the mood to finish after this mess. And she gets an attitude. She walks out. I said, girl, stop. Fast behind. Then we have um, Kane and he in the room holding the gun from P Palomar and the envelope from Detective Howard. Then he gets up and he leaves. Marvin is eating pizza with one of Sal's boys. Marvin tells him they have, I think his name is Marco. Okay. And Marvin tells him they have a, a, a rat problem and he needs a, a pasty face mother effer like him to f fit right in and handle the situation. Says he'll pay him five G's. And I'm assuming that was, yeah, he said five. So I'm assuming that was five G's. And um, we learned this is like Sal's son. So he said his father can't know about this and he'll think about it. Um, let's see, Rock is out at a fancy restaurant, you know, with Cartier, and they, he's eating caviar and all this stuff, and one of his associates named Tremont Tinson shows up, and they chat for a few, and when Tremont states that he makes his own money after Cartier claimed he's responsible for him making the money, Cartier tells him to get that F out of his face, and so he goes, and then Rock makes a comment to Cartier about insubordination leads to insurrection, she said, you the one that told me that, or is it just talk? And Cartier turned around, looked at the dude again as he went and sat at another table. And he thought about that. But he took care of his butt later. Anyway, we got Kanan who shows up at Palomar's house to bring the gun back. And he asked about Corinne and learned she wasn't home. And he tried to leave. But Palomar opened up her top and stuff. She a fast behind and started kissing Kanan. And he backed up and stopped. He's like, whoa, whoa, you know that Corinne was his girlfriend. And then he, she opened up her robe and said, you know, I'm a woman first. And Kanan was like, for real? And then he went for it. I guess, whoa. I was like, wow. But something's wrong because that's happening then. But then they later show him with, um, what's his name? Symphony. But I'll get to that part. Because then we have Laverne at Bible class where her mother and the preacher is teaching against homosexuality as stated in the book of Leviticus in the Bible and that it's wickedness and old-fashioned hellish, hellish sin. I was like, damn. And poor Laverne, she's like uh, looking uncomfortable and feeling confused. And I think it, it a bit, she was a bit in pain, I think, too. You know, that was hurting her, I feel, like she was feeling hurt. But she gets outside and that boy at the church is still trying to holler at her and get her digits. And I'm trying to figure out what, what, what church this is in the middle of a block in Harlem. I'm trying to figure out where that church is. It can't be too far from me, but that's been bothering me. So, but anyway, I'm sorry. I got away from the, re the review. Anyway, so Kenya is peeping what's happening. So Laverne gives him a number. I don't know whose number that is, but Kenya's smiling at her. 
So I'm like, whose number did he get? Because I know they ain't got no cell phones. So I just, I was just curious. Um, we got Marvin. He goes to the spot and find out they're ta Lou taking all of the money. And it hasn't been counted. And Marvin tells him he can't do that. And Lou said it's in his head. And he bounced. I said, wait a minute. Lou is messing up. Lou is messing up. We got Detective Howard. He shows up at the precinct and he sees Scrappy's mother in there. And, and, and she's not buying it that her son committed suicide and wants an investigation. What we end up learning is that she was Detective Peng's CI. She was the CI where she would have the card games each week and get the neighborhood 411 and report back. So Detective Howard thought it was Scrappy was the CI and he um basically got scrappy killed, if you ask me. It's his responsibility. Laverne's in Rock's kitchen cooking, and Marvin comes in looking for Rock. He asks Jukebox, how's she doing? I, you see, I switched to Jukebox as soon as it was her daddy. I can't help it. And was going to leave. Then he asks, when was she going to tell him about her mom's? And she said, I wasn't. And he asked, you know, she asked who told him. And he was like, don't worry about that. And then he said, you know, she left us. Kenya left both of us, you know, she ain't your mother. She just some broad who dropped the baby and ran. I said, what? What is wrong with him? He's like, you think, she's like, you or you think you did any better? Marvin said, yeah, I might have effed up plenty, but at least I was here and never stopped trying. And I was like, you know what? I got to give Marvin some props for that because he is so right. And Juke has to realize that, yeah, he's a F up and stuff, but you got to see the business he's in. And, you know, how is it, you know, it had to be hard for him. It had to be hard for him, but he's still there. And that's the point, right? And so he said that she's on her ish and always has been. And then he left. So he was trying to make Juke feel that her mother would never care about her. She ain't her mother. I didn't like that. I didn't like that he said that. I gave him props for the other thing, but I'll take away some points about what he said about the mother, whether it's true or not. Leave it alone. Then we got Rob. She sees Tremont in the hotel lobby. I guess she was waiting for him, and he looks jacked up. So I guess that's what I'm saying. Claudia beat that A. He beat that A up, and he told me he fell and tripped in the shower. <laughs> so Rock tries to make a deal with him to become one of her business partners, and he told her she got some balls stepping to him. How he she know he won't go and drop dime to, you know, Cartier and stuff. And she said, I know you don't want to deal with him anymore, you know, after this or whatever it was. Because he taking your money, I'll make you a better deal. So, and she said, if you a real businessman, like you said, I'll be hearing from you so, real soon. So, I was like, okay, we'll see about that. We got Kana eating pizza with Symphony. See, he was just with the mother. So, how he here eating pizza with Symphony now? Unless he went back later to get some more or something. But he said, um, he asks his, you know, Symphony asks him about his grades and then tells him about the job offer he got in Charlotte, North Carolina. And he's like, you know, I, I, I got to tell y'all, I like that relationship between Kanan and Symphony. I thought that was a good relationship. I'm not understanding how Rock be messing up these things, you know. It, it was a good and it was positive. It was a positive relationship. So I don't know what's Rock's thought process, but it's too much for me. So then they leave the pizza shop and Detective Burke is watching them. And she runs, you know, Symphony's uh, now license plate. Now he's an innocent party in her nosiness. And then she pulls him over and asks the, for license and registration and proceeds to start asking him questions as to why he was in the area that night the cop was shot and how does he know Kanan Stark and have you met his father at the airport at, 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 met his father and he said at this point Symphony was like he was refusing to answer any questions said if you give in a ticket give me the damn ticket because these questions seem to be out of line and he is right he said something about um about his constitutional rights or something like that it was so anyway we got rock she learns the seller is happy with her offer on the house but the hoa wants proof of income and rock says she she could pay she paying cash she said yeah but they still sticklers about this that and the other so she said don't worry i own a record label and a lawnmower here we go we're gonna have a problem now remember that part about the record label that she said she owned because it's gonna be a problem i have a feeling and I can't wait to see how this plays out with Cartier. But anyway, we have Jukebox in a repair shop to get that VHS tape fixed. You know, her, her and Nicole sing it. And the guy said it'll cost $20. Come back tomorrow. I said, nigga, damn, where's her receipt? How you know which videotape is hers? 
he didn't give her no receipt or nothing. That was kind of weird to me. Then we got Unique and Warrell. They talking and Neek is telling him about some plans that they need to be putting in place when Marco, to my south, oh, they need to be putting in place. And then Marco, you know, South son, he rolls up and asks him about Marvin and Unique states that as far as he knows, Marvin pays up and he said, okay, they working on a little problem he has in Westchester. That's all. He said, okay. But Unique did say that, oh Lord, those two together, that's a like a, a working of disaster. He said something. I forgot what Unique said about them two working together. And I just started laughing because obviously he knows something we don't know, you know. We got Detective Shannon Burke going through more of Detective Malcolm Howard's prior work records and another officer hears what's going on while the old white cop who gave her access is saying he could lose his job. But he wants her to look out for his nephew with a shoplifting arrest. And she's like, yeah, 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 like I'll do it later or something. So he has a reason for letting her see it. He don't mind trying to lose his damn job to help his, his shoplifting nephew. I don't know. Just crazy. Then we got Rock and Juliana and her cousin are in a restaurant discussing unique and other business. And she shares her goal of expanding to Maryland and D.C. with them. But I got to tell y'all, Juliana was looking lovely. She got the hair all out and everything. She was looking up with the white on. She looked like she was glowing like she was an angel. I said, you better go ahead, Liliana. You ain't just no store clerk, honey. You, you big time, you know. So Juliana notices some guy, you know, sort of watching them. And he gets his order and he goes outside and gets in the car with Tremont. And now he wants, Tremont wants to know about everyone who was sitting at that table. So Tremont is checking who Rock is and he's doing whatever he does to, to find out. We got Lou. He gets out of his car and someone smashes his tail like he turns around and another guy punches him in the face. Then he hits the ground and these three guys spent, um, sent from what, Linton Manley proceed to kicking his behind, kicking and stomping him while he on the ground. I said, see Lou? See what's going on? You let your, your anger and your temper get the best of you. And you choked out crown. And now what? Now what you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you, bad boys? Let me stop. Anyway, <laughs> then, we got, then we got Rock. Rock's doorbell rings. And she looks and peeps. And she jumps back and puts down the laundry basket. And it's symphony. And they go and sit out. She, you know, she sits out on the front steps with him like teenagers they were. And he tells her about his job off in North Carolina. And they kind of like got quiet. Like they didn't know what to do. You know what to say. You know, like they shy and stuff. Then he tells her about the white cop, lady cop that pulled him over and asked about the night that he, she had him take Canaan down south and about Canaan's father. And she's like, well, what did you tell her? He said nothing. And she's like, well, what's nothing? Nothing to you might be something to me. He's like, Rock, your secrets are safe with me. I ain't got no secrets. I said, Rock, come on, this symphony now. You know, he had to come tell you nothing. He had to tell you Jack, and he did. So he gets up and he leaves saying, you know what? Take care of yourself. Because it's like, if you don't know me by now. You know, she need to know him by now. That man is like... He got her back. He loves her. He said he wanted to be her vacation. Damn, you know. Anyway, that was that other, you know, episode when he said that. That's That was a hot line, he said, too. But anyway, we got Miss Renee is giving her anger management group a speech. And it's their last day. And she's saying how proud she is of all of them. And I'm always here if you need me. So don't hesitate to reach out. And she's sort of looking at Marvin when she said that Marvin's peeping this like, okay. And then she goes over to talk to him after he's finished talking to the bald head guy who wanted to kick his butt in the first, uh, in the first meeting. And she gives him her number saying, you know, she hopes... He'll stay in touch. She she loved to hear from him. He said he loved being hear, heard from or something like that. He said, anyway, he was cracking jokes on the bald head man's you know head, and I was like, Marvin is hilarious. So then we got Corinne. She walks in on Kanan in bed with her mother. See what I'm saying? How is Kanan in bed with her mother when he was just at the pizza shop with, um, what's his name? Um, with Symphony. Unless it's a different day. So she's in bed with her mother. She calls her a effing whore and, and throws a milk container at her. And she tells um 
she tells her daughter she needs to learn how to hold on to her man. And Kane is like, what the hell is going on here? And Kane is trying to explain to Corinne that it just sort of happened. And her mother's like, she'll be all right. And he's like, what you talk about? You act like this is something regular you doing. And she felt she, she didn't feel like she was doing anything wrong. I was like, what is wrong with Paloma? So when Kanan is getting dressed, she starts trying to pull on him and kissing him again. And she pulls him right back down into the bed. I said, oh my God, this mother is crazy. So then we have Lou talking to Cartier and he needs some money. And Cartier is asking if his sister, why won't Rock do it and stuff? You know, because uh, Lou's telling him that Crown not around anymore. And that he doesn't, and he said he doesn't want, you know, Rock to touch his business. So Cartier tells him that he wants half of Crown's half of the studio and said that Lou should, could, um, would still have control and interest and he'll be a silent partner. He said, you know better than I do. One nigga's crisis is another nigga's opportunity. I said, oh my goodness. Come on, come on. Then we got Mark on Westchester with that racist that's down with Sal and he's about to shoot someone and he told the racist that Sal is not to know about this and understood he's like got it you know so they go inside Marco shoots Tony the boyfriend jumps on him and they rolling around on the tussling on the floor and he telling the guy to shoot shoot the man and that damn racist he can't even that's the one that was beating up Kane in the last week I think it was the racist ends up shooting Marco dead oh my god Oh my God, instead of the beat boyfriend. And he's standing there, don't know what to do. The boyfriend grabbed the gun and starts shooting at him and hit him a couple of times. And the 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 the, um, the races did get off one shot and hit the um one shot and did hit the boyfriend. But I was like, dude, you're standing there, what's going on? So he shoots the dumb races as he's running away. We got Laverne walking with the guy from church and then he kisses her and she stops. You know, she wasn't comfortable with that. We all know why she Laverne wasn't comfortable with that. And he wants to hang out again with her and says she was lots of fun. And she's like, OK, fine. Then we see um Rock meeting with Detective Howard in somewhere in Queens in a big park. I, I think that's where the World's Fair was many years ago. And she's telling him, you know, by that big globe they're meeting. And she's telling him about his partner and he acting like it's no big deal. I said, come on now. You were even upset and stopped seeing that hooker because of her. So don't act like it's no big deal. She's just a dog with a bone, all this stuff. So he tells her that he sprung famous, asking to Kane and told him, your, your son came and asked me to do it. And that he had a bag full of drug money. I presume it was yours. And he said, if you keep putting Kanan in the crosshairs, eventually he's going to end up getting hit. I said, see, and he's absolutely right. And that's what he was trying to get Kanan out of. And that's what Symphony was trying to get. But Rock didn't listen. And then he told her that Scrappy wasn't the snitch. He made a mistake. I was like, oh, snap. And she said, you told me it was Scrappy. He said, yeah, that's easy to do with everyone out there lying and perpetrating. And his mother ain't falling for it. She don't believe that her son killed it. And she ain't trying to let it go. And he said, what you going to do when Kanan sees all of your lies and mistakes? Rock just walked away from him. I said, see, he right. I don't know why I feel like Kanan ends up killing her later. He going to find out all the stuff she had him doing. And he might end up killing his mama later. Then Burke was up all night. Girlfriend comes out. Putting, putting the pieces together and her girlfriend tells her that she needs to leave this alone and Burke says she's investigating I'm investigating the shooting of a cop and her girlfriend says no you're not investigating the shooting of a cop you're investigating a cop all of a sudden you're internal affairs and no one likes internal affairs if you don't remember you better ask somebody <laughs> you know so Burke ignores her Corinne goes to Kanan's house and says, Miss Thomas, I'm a friend of Kanan. My name is Corinne, and I think there's something you need to know. I said, oh, God, Paloma going to get hurt. We got Laverne. She takes the repaired VHS tape and leaves it at Nicole's father's house. She rings the doorbell and leaves. Thank God she had the hoodie on over her head. Now, she walking down the sidewalk. She didn't even know. She notices at the last minute she passed Detective Howard, who was so focused on the street addresses that he didn't see her. So Detective Howard is at the house now as Nicole's father opens the door and gets the VHS tape. And he says he needs to talk to him about Detective Shannon Burke. And Laverne sees him go inside. But, um... Uh, the father also was asking him, did you see who left this on my step doorstep? And he said, no. 
So they, that was that. I said, I don't know if he's getting information to get Detective Burt in trouble or if he's getting information just to help with the case. I don't know what's going on. Then we got Ziza. She in the studio recording and Lou is getting upset because Cartier is taking over. He doing everything at the board and he's just rolling his eyes, looking at him pissed. And it ends with the racist alone on the rooftop dying. The guy who got shot is in the hospital talking to the police. And Rock waiting to see Symphony wanting to shoot him because she thinks he's going to tell her private business. I said, what the hell is wrong with her and her trust issue? And the thing is, she never even told him about Kanan's father or why she had him drive Kanan down south. But she drove by, cut off the headlights, and she couldn't do it. And I was like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because I would have had a whole big problem with her if she shot Symphony. That's a good brother. And she messing up. She messing up real bad. She's so quick to shoot somebody thinking, what's his name was a snitch? You need to know your people. You know Scrappy was no damn snitch. He took an eye for you. Adios, me horse. Anyway, y'all, <laughs> that was the end of my review recap. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about it. I thought it was great. I thought it was a great episode. And for those of you who haven't, who haven't subscribed to my channel, please take a moment now. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video. It's your girl, Bobby J, saying peace.